Welcome back to WWH. My name is Andrew Dreamer, and WrestleMania 40 is very quickly approaching. That means it's also mania season here at Wrestling With Horror. Every year, the Royal Rumble sets the stage for the ultimate showdown, WrestleMania. But with nearly 40 manias already in the books, which ones truly reign supreme? We're diving deep, ranking the top 10 WrestleManias of all time from unforgettable main events to moments that shocked the world. The road to WrestleMania begins at the Royal Rumble, but ours, it begins with a ranking rumble. It all began in 1985 when Hulk Hogan and Mr. T wrestled in the main event of the very first WrestleMania. This first WrestleMania was a gamble held in a giant stadium with no guarantee it would succeed. Let's just say the gamble body slammed out into oblivion. WrestleMania became an annual tradition featuring iconic moments like the body slam heard around the world and The Undertaker's amazing streak. Today, WrestleMania is a global phenomenon with celebrities, over-the-top entrances, and matches that push the boundaries of athleticism and sometimes sanity. It's a pop culture extravaganza with a healthy dose of spandex and body slams. So whether you're a diehard fan or just here for the spectacle, WrestleMania is guaranteed to entertain, even if you occasionally have to ask yourself, what am I actually watching? With that being said, let's just dive right in and get this ranking rumble started. Our first entrant is WrestleMania 10 from 1994. It was a wild ride that took place in the birthplace of WrestleMania itself, Madison Square Garden. This event marked a couple of firsts. It was the first without Hulk Hogan, and it was also the first to feature a ladder match, a new kind of chaotic brawl that would become a fan favorite. Speaking of brawls, the main event was a whole thing. Lex Luger and Bret Hart were both declared co-winners of the Royal Rumble that year, so they both got a shot at the championship held by the massive Yokozuna. Keep in mind, these were separate matches. Luger, bless his heart, got himself disqualified in his match when he put his hands on Mr. Perfect, who was the special guest referee. That left the stage clear for Bret Hart, who eventually pulled off the upset and became champ. This win was a big deal for Hart, and the outpouring of love from his fellow wrestlers afterwards is a heartwarming moment. WrestleMania 10 wasn't all about the world championship, though. Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon tore the house down in their ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship. A match so good, it basically invented a whole new kind of wrestling. WrestleMania 3, held on March 29th, 1987, was a body slam heard around the world, though with 78,000 in attendance, it might have been a little hard to hear. The main event featured the iconic Hulk Hogan defending his WWF Championship against the larger-than-life Andre the Giant. This match was pure spectacle, with Hogan body slamming the massive Andre in a moment that cemented his status as a wrestling legend. It was like watching Superman pick up a school bus. The greatest professional athlete in the world today. Look at this. He's the undercard wasn't too shabby either. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and Macho Man Randy Savage had a classic match that is considered one of the greatest mania matches of all time. It was so good, even the ring announcer Howard Finkel got winded calling it. All in all, WrestleMania 3 was a pop culture phenomenon, launching professional wrestling into the mainstream and proving that even giants can be brought down with a little elbow grease and maybe some vitamins, or whatever Hulk was taking at the time. By the way, don't miss a single bone-crushing upload. Hit that subscribe button, unleash the horrors, and become a member of the WWH universe. We're not just wrestling with horror. We're delivering it to your screen every week. Moving on now. WrestleMania 21, held in sunny Los Angeles in 2005, lived up to its WrestleMania Goes Hollywood nickname with enough drama to rival a blockbuster action movie. In the main event, the ever-muscly Batista, tired of playing second fiddle to Triple H, who the year before appeared in Blade Trinity, challenged him for the World Heavyweight Championship. 
The night wasn't all about brute force though. The legendary Shawn Michaels and the ever technical Kurt Angle threw down in a match so good it would make your head spin faster than a movie with 10 cuts per second. And you also had The Undertaker taking on Randy Orton in a very good match as well. Meanwhile, Edge, in a move that launched a whole new type of WrestleMania mayhem, became the first ever Mr. Money in the Bank by grabbing a briefcase suspended high above the ring, proving that sometimes the best way to get ahead in Hollywood is to literally climb the ladder. WrestleMania 18, held on St. Patrick's Day in 2002, threw a wrestling party so wild it would make Warwick Davis blush. The main attraction was Icon versus Icon, as The Rock, the people's champ, took on Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Let's just say it was a battle of who could crank up the theatrics the most. Triple H battled Chris Jericho for the undisputed WWF Championship. Meanwhile, The Undertaker, ever the morbid fella, extended his undefeated streak at WrestleMania by defeating Ric Flair, who at that point was already wrestling circles around Father Time himself. You also had Stone Cold Steve Austin taking on Scott Hall in what felt like an unnecessary match, but still cool nonetheless. All in all, WrestleMania 18 wasn't quite a shamrock shake, but it was definitely an entertaining event. WrestleMania 30, held in the Big Easy of New Orleans in 2014, was a wild ride that left fans feeling like they just chugged down a hurricane, minus the property damage, hopefully. The main event featured a story hotter than Louisiana hot sauce. Underdog Daniel Bryan, a fan favorite with a beard that rivaled ZZ Top, fought against the odds and Triple H's machinations to challenge for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Let's just say the crowd went from feeling a little flat to yesing all night long. WrestleMania 30 wasn't all about underdogs and championship dreams though. It was also a night of heartbreak for many, many fans, including myself. This was the night that Brock Lesnar ended The Undertaker's undefeated WrestleMania streak, making it 21 and one. From Daniel Bryan winning an opportunity to challenge for the title in the main event, to winning the title in the main event, to Taker's streak ending. This was a show full of emotions, both good and bad. WrestleMania 28, held on April 1st, 2012 in Miami, Florida, wasn't fooling around. Billed as once in a lifetime, the main event featured a clash of titans, The Rock versus John Cena. It was a dream match years in the making, and the electricity in the stadium could have powered the whole state. The Rock, returning after a long hiatus, traded epic insults in a typical fashion with Cena during the buildup. Thankfully, they channeled that aggression into a show-stopping match that will go down in WWE history. WrestleMania 28 wasn't a one-hit wonder, though. The Undertaker and Triple H threw down in an absolutely brutal Hell in a Cell match refereed by none other than HBK Shawn Michaels. Let's just say there was a bit of chin music in there. This match is a huge part of why I love this WrestleMania so much. Elsewhere on the card you had CM Punk taking on Chris Jericho for the WWE Championship and I think that, that was a very good match. By the end of the night everyone was left exhausted, entertained, and maybe a little sore from all the secondhand chair shots. Our next entrant is WrestleMania 25, and this one is particularly special to me, mostly because of one match. Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker. All of the spectacle, grandest stage of them all, brilliance that you could ask for. The Phenom versus The Showstopper. The Dead Man versus The Heartbreak Kid. This is my favorite wrestling match of all time, and I think they worked this match to perfection. There were a lot of 2.9999 counts, and emotions were running high. And I love the finish to this match. Moonsault off the top rope into a tombstone for the win. Undertaker! Here comes it coming! Oh, oh, Michael's in midair! Michael's caught! Michael's caught! Michael's caught! Tombstone! Of course, they had matches in the past, but this one felt different. It felt bigger. You also had CM Punk winning the Money in the Bank. It was a display of acrobatics that would have made Cirque du Soleil jealous and about as safe. John Cena also defeated Edge and Big Show in a triple threat match for the title where we got that crazy spot that had Cena picking up both men for a double attitude adjustment. 
WrestleMania 24, held in 2008 under the sunny skies of Orlando, Florida, was a landmark event for WWE. Not only was it the first WrestleMania to ever grace the Sunshine State, but it was also the second to be held entirely outdoors, making it a sweaty good time for everyone involved, except maybe for those who wore full body gear. The event featured all of the usual WrestleMania theatrics, gigantic athletes in epic throwdowns, grudge matches that settled year-long rivalries, and even Money in the Bank ladder match so chaotic it looked like a Black Friday sale at a discount furniture store. CM Punk actually won this match, meaning he won at both WrestleMania 24 and 25, making him the only person to outright win the match twice. Obviously, others have held the briefcase more than once, but Punk won the match twice. Also on the card was Randy Orton winning a triple threat match against John Cena and Triple H. When you put these three in the ring, you just know it's going to be good. And we can't forget the emotional conquest that was Ric Flair losing to Shawn Michaels, forcing him to retire. The, I'm sorry, I love you, hit us all so hard. Flair wants to fight. Oh. WrestleMania 19, held in 2003, threw a pile driver party in Seattle, Washington, the first and only time the Emerald City has hosted the granddaddy of them all. With a record-breaking attendance of over 54,000 fans, the energy was so electric it practically caused a power outage, though that might have been Brock Lesnar practicing his entrance. The event saw the final chapter in the epic rivalry between Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock. It was a battle between two Attitude Era legends, some might say their rivalry was a little past its expiration date, but let's be honest. Watching those two trade blows one final time brought some amazing feelings. And this was also the Texas Rattlesnake's last match before retiring, at least until WrestleMania 38. You also had the epic encounter between Brock Lesnar and Kurt Angle in which Brock nearly broke his neck. I, this ain't Brock. Brock doesn't do... What the hell is this? What the hell's Lesnar doing, Cole? Oh my God! And then there was the match between Shawn Michaels and Chris Jericho that was absolutely amazing. Jericho holds this match in a very high regard, and I think that's for good reason. Finally, we're about to unveil our final entrant, my favorite WrestleMania of all time. But first, we had to take a short break, so stick around for more WWH action. If you're looking to save 20% off of your entire order from Redcon, all you have to do is type in code ANDREWDREAMER12 when you're checking out, and you will immediately receive 20% off. Head over to ProWrestlingTees.com slash ANDREWDREAMER to check out some of my merchandise as well. And last but not least, go check out our Patreon page and consider becoming a member of the WWH Universe. There are a lot of really cool perks, and we would love to have you. It's time to unveil the grandest of the grandest stage of them all, the showcasiest of the showcase of immortals. So let's just get right to it. WrestleMania 17 in 2001 is my favorite WrestleMania of all time, hands down. This might be a generic answer, but for me, it's bigger than just how good the show is, and the show is great. For me, it's also about the nostalgia I have. It was the first WrestleMania that I actually got to watch. It was a part of that formative time in my life that made me fall in love with professional wrestling, and for that reason, it will always be my favorite. But I do want to highlight some of the best moments of the show. First off, TLC2. It was freaking amazing. The Hardys, the Dudleys, and Edge and Christian showcased a new style of wrestling that most WWE fans hadn't quite seen yet. Tables, ladders, and chairs thrown everywhere. Interference from every direction. It was literal non-stop action, but the highlight for me has to be the spear off the ladder. I, I mean, wow. Oh, look at that. Oh, my God. And for the 21 ladder. Beyond that, there was the surprisingly good street fight between the former chairman of the board and his son. And look, I get how goofy it was, but I actually love the gimmick battle royal. I even liked the hardcore match between Kane, Raven, and Big Show. I thought it was fun. The Undertaker and Triple H also had a pretty good match, which would turn out to be the first of three that they would ultimately have at WrestleMania. But the biggest story of the night was Austin Rock 2, which is their best outing in my opinion. It really had everything that you could possibly want. Yeah, you had Austin turning heel and what's probably one of the worst decisions ever made, 
But personally, I don't think that takes away from how good the match itself is. And that's just how I feel. But there you have it. WrestleMania 17 is our ranking Rumble champion. There were a lot of contenders, but none quite like this one. This show really does mean a lot to me. All right, folks, that's it for my personal Mount Rushmore of WrestleMania. There were epic matches, unforgettable moments, and maybe a few you don't agree with. What are your favorite WrestleManias? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoyed this trip down memory lane. And remember, in the squared circle of horror, there's no count out for nightmares. My name is Andrew Dreamer, and this is Wrestling With Horror.